Hello and welcome to this video on running planned comparisons following a significant analysis of variance result. In our data set here we have some fake data where we're looking at the relationship between hair color and introversion. And as you can see we have three levels of hair color blonde, brunette, and redhead and we've coded those one, two, and three and then we have our dependent variable introversion. So we'll just quickly run the analysis of variance itself just to make sure that we should even bother with the planned comparisons or the planned contrasts. If you get a non-significant ANOVA, then you're just done. So we put hair color in the factor box because that's our independent variable and introversion in our dependent list. That's our dependent variable. And we'll just select a few options. Descriptive statistics gives us means and standard deviations. Homogeneity of variance test, that's Levine's, that'll tell us if we've met that assumption. And if we haven't, then Brown, Forsyth, and Welsh are good alternatives to the ANOVA. You could select means plot, but if you do that, you're just going to get a line graph, which doesn't look all that good. So it's better to not do a bar graph yourself. Okay, so here's our descriptives. And we can see that for... Um, Blondes, brunettes, and redheads, we do have different levels of introversion. Blondes have an, uh, 5.33, brunettes 3.5, and redheads 2.33. So there are differences among the groups. The question is whether those are significant or not. Before we answer that, we'll just quickly take a look at the test of homogeneity of variances. We can see that our significance value for this is 0.378. And remember, for tests of assumptions, you want a non-significant result. This essentially means that the null hypothesis of meeting the assumption is true, or seems to be true. If you had a value of 0.05 or lower, then you'd reject that null, and you'd say that you violated the assumption, and then you'd have to go down the path of the alternative tests. So we're free to look at the ANOVA itself. We have a significance of 6.9. 3.9 is our F value, and the P value is 0.01, so it's significant at 0.05 as well as 0.01. And this means that we can go ahead and move forward with our planned contrasts. But what are planned contrasts? Well, planned contrasts are when you have specific comparisons that you want to make involving specific groups in your of your independent variable, and they can be complex. Pairwise contrasts are just comparing one group versus another. A complex contrast has more than one group on one side or even both sides. In this case, we have three groups, so we might run a couple of pl planned contrasts. And they have to be nested, so let me tell you what I mean by that. So first, we might want to compare blondes to the other two groups. So in this case, we would compare the blondes on one side to brunettes and redheads together on the other side. So that's an example of a complex contrast because you have the brunettes and the redheads together on the, on the uh, right-hand side of that contrast. Once you've done that, uh, then you could further break down the brunettes and redheads and compare them to each other. So while contrast number one would compare the blondes to the brunettes and redheads together, contrast number two would compare the brunettes versus the redheads as a second contrast. And after that, you'd be pretty much done. So to do the contrasts, you go back to the same menu option, Analyze, Compare Means, One Way ANOVA, and we'll just unselect these things here so we don't get more output than we need, and click Contrasts. Okay, so for each contrast, you need to give each of your groups a weight or a coefficient. And the rules are that when you have the two sides of the contrast, they must be equal in magnitude but opposite in sign. So what I usually do is create the contrast so that one side adds up to one and the other side adds up to negative one. And at the end of all that your coefficient total should remain zero. So it doesn't matter which side is one or negative one. Uh, we'll just go ahead and start with the comparison or the contrast that we talked about before which is blondes on the one hand versus brunettes and redheads on the other. So we'll give blondes a coefficient of 1. And SPSS is going in the order that you coded that independent variable. So we had blondes as 1, brunettes as 2, redheads as 3. That was how we coded them when we entered our data. We have to move in that same order. 
So that's blondes, and then brunettes and redheads, we're going to give them a weight combined of negative one. But since there's two groups, we need to split that negative one in half. So each of those two groups is going to get a negative 0.5. So that's for the brunettes, and again, negative 0.5 for the redheads. And you can see that when you add all that up, you get the zero, and that's what you should have. So this is telling us we're going to have blondes on the one side, brunettes and redheads together on the other side. Click Next to do our second contrast. And in this case, remember, we're going to compare brunettes and redheads. But blondes still need a coefficient. Even though we're not including them in the contrast, we need to give them a coefficient. Since we're not including them, we give them a zero. That tells SPSS to ignore them for this contrast. And in this case, brunettes are on the left. We'll give them a one. Redheads, we'll give the negative one and we're back to zero, where we should be. When we run these, we'll be able to confirm that we got the contrast set up the way we wanted them. Go ahead and click Continue and OK. Just a repeat of our ANOVA results. And here is the summary of our contrasts. So the first one is comparing blondes on the one side versus brunettes and redheads on the other. And the second contrast is ignoring blondes and comparing brunettes versus redheads. Now when we look at our actual results, we see two sets of rows. One, if we assume that there are equal variances, and the second, if we don't. Now remember from our Levine's test that we met the assumption of homogeneity of variance, so we can use the top pair of rows. So when we look at our first contrast, blondes versus brunettes and redheads, we see that the, the contrast in terms of the mean difference of the one group versus the pair of others is 2.4, and we get a standard T with the degrees of freedom and a p-value. And our p-value is 0 0.005. That's significant at the 0 0.05 and the 0 0.01 level, so blondes are significantly different from brunettes and redheads when it comes to introversion. And if we scroll back up to the descriptive statistics, we can see that the blondes have a significantly higher introversion level than brunettes and redheads for this data set. Now we want to see if brunettes and redheads are different from each other. Their difference is, you can see, about 1.17, and you can see that here as well. And this T is 1.38, and the p-value is 0.188. That's not significant. So while blondes are more introverted in this data set than brunettes and redheads, Brunettes and redheads are not significantly different from one another on introversion. Even though the brunettes are more introverted, they're not significantly so. That's it for running plan contrasts. In a future video, I will show you how to do post hoc tests. Thanks for watching.